I'm being compelled by the court um, to to uh, make a statement before I speak about COVID or Alberta Health Services or the government or anything like that. In essence, uh, I'm being forced to lie. And we expect to be in receipt of the written ruling shortly. As soon as we get it, we're going to closely scrutinize the amount of the fine levied against Chris. And specifically, and most importantly, we're going to give careful review to any aspects of the probation order which affect Chris's absolute right to freedom of speech. Sheila Gunn-Reed here for Rebel News, and I'm sure you've heard by now that small town restaurant owner Chris Scott of the Whistle Stop Cafe was sentenced on Wednesday morning by Justice Adam Germain for contempt of a secret court order that restricted Chris Scott's right to protest the government's seizure of his property. Warning, censorship. This property is the only gas station, convenience store, and campground in the small town of Mirror, Alberta, population just 500 people. You see, Chris Scott embarrassed the government by leading the restaurant rebellion against the closure of dine-in services. So the government ticketed him, issued him summonses, chained the doors on his property, and eventually obtained a court order that restricted public gatherings, which included Chris Scott's planned protest against all that the government had done to him. Now, on the night of his 1,500-person strong protest, Chris Scott was arrested and then held for three days for violating the court order that the government had gotten in secret without informing Chris's longtime lawyer, Chad Williamson. Now, Williamson has been fighting like a lion for Chris Scott for months. Williamson's fees are paid through Rebel News' Civil Liberties Initiative, FightTheFines.com, where we put people who are facing COVID infractions in touch with top criminal and civil litigators at no cost to them. We do that all through crowdfunding donations to a civil liberties charity called the Democracy Fund. To donate, just simply go to FightTheFines.com. Yesterday, for contempt of the secret court order that limited protests, which are, of course, free speech, Chris Scott received a sentence that limits his free speech. And we'll get to that in a minute. For defying the restrictions on protests, Chris Scott faced a potential of 21 more days in jail. That's what Alberta Health Services was asking the court for. However, Chris received $20,000 in fines. He's forced to pay nearly $11,000 in costs to the government for the trouble of prosecuting him. And he has to serve 18 months probation, wherein he has to keep the peace and be of good behavior. But while Chris Scott has physically avoided jail, Justice Adam Germain is compelling his speech, forcing Chris Scott to preface every public statement that he makes about the lockdown or restrictions or vaccines with the official government talking points regarding all of those things. I would not have believed such an un-Canadian, unfree speech order was ever issued, but I heard it myself while I was attending the court hearing remotely. Justice Adam Germain even read a script while he was issuing his ruling that he expects Chris Scott to use every time he says something critical of the lockdown in public. Now here's Chris Scott reacting to that judgment last night on Facebook, here. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's Chris here at the Whistle Stop Cafe in Mirror, Alberta. Well, obviously I'm not at the Whistle Stop Cafe. I'm with the Whistle Stop Cafe, but it's apparent that I'm in Red Deer. Um, I don't know if any of you saw my sentencing this morning. It was a fairly interesting, um, it was an interesting sentence hounded, hounded down by Justice Germain. Uh, we'll obviously be appealing parts of that, but in the meantime, as part of my sentencing, I'm also being forced, maybe that's not the right word, I'm being compelled by the court um, to, to uh, make a statement before I speak about COVID or Alberta Health Services or the government or anything like that. In essence, uh, I'm being forced to lie. So, here is my disclaimer. The views and opinions that I express in regards to COVID-19, vaccines, Alberta Health Services, and the Alberta government go against 
the scientific consensus of the day. According to the government and AHS, vaccines are safe and effective. According to the Alberta government and AHS, these vaccines have a great safety record. Um, they have studies and statistics and data to show the safety and effects effectiveness of the vaccine. COVID-19 is real. Uh, Alberta Health Services has the health and safety of Albertans as their primary mandate. If this wasn't the case... Oh, wait a minute. If this was the case, why would I have to be compelled by court to say so? Anyway, that's my statement and my disclaimer regarding COVID-19 and Alberta Health Services. This absolutely cannot stand. This isn't Soviet Russia. We can't compel people to denounce themselves in the public square every time they embarrass the government. As I'm saying this, we don't even have the judge's written ruling yet, but we do know what he said in open court and that he expects Chris and his fellow defendants, the Polosky brothers, the pastors from Calgary, that every time they say something contrary to the official government narrative on lockdowns, vaccines, and health restrictions, that they must give the government official talking points. Well, we're appealing this decision. Here's what Chris Scott's lawyer, Chad Williamson, had as his immediate reaction. Here. The contempt sentencing decision rendered yesterday in the Whistle Stop case is complex and it engages yet again a multitude of serious legal issues which are going to require deep, thoughtful, and immediate analysis. Now, look, we're not in a position to provide substantive commentary on yesterday's proceedings as we're still waiting for the written decision to come in. And that's where the meat of this matter is, and we expect to be in receipt of the written ruling shortly. As soon as we get it, we're going to closely scrutinize the amount of the fine levied against Chris. And specifically, and most importantly, we're going to give careful review to any aspects of the probation order which affect Chris Chris's absolute right to freedom of speech. I, again, can't go into any details right now. We've got some serious questions and we hope to get some answers as the dust settles. We'll give updates as soon as we're able to and as soon as more information is available. As guardians of democracy and the rule of law, it is incumbent upon my legal team and the lawyers representing the other parties in this action to review these decisions with a fine tooth comb. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. All of this sets a worrying precedent for the rest of us because if the rest of us are now found to be breaking COVID violations, do we have to have a public Maoist struggle session with ourselves on social media just to be able to speak what's on our hearts in a free country? I listened yesterday in court as this judge, Justice Adam Germain, cited other judgments against other so-called COVID scoff laws across the country as relevant cases when he was making his own decision. That's why this cannot stand. This will become a relevant case when other judges are making their decisions and other Canadians could end up with compelled speech as a condition of their sentences. In Canada, we can't even compel a murderer to apologize to a victim's family. How can we compel people to violate their conscience to give the vaccine salesman viewpoint on vaccine passports and lockdowns on social media? Now, we've got an enormous fight against us, but Chris Scott, and every single Canadian has a right to speak what's on their mind about government policy without fear of reprisal from the government. Please go to fightthefines.com and make a donation today to offset Chris's legal fees and to help fund our appeal of this decision. All of your donations there now qualify for a charitable tax receipt through the registered Canadian charity, the Democracy Fund. Let me be clear, none of that money comes to us here at Rebel News. It doesn't even go to Chris Scott. It goes to help people fight their lockdown tickets in court and it goes to help Chris's appeal. This is about Chris's free speech today, but it's about all of us who speak out against government overreach. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. This compelled speech ruling by Justice Adam Germain cannot stand. We have to appeal it with everything we can to help us fight for free speech 
Please donate today at fightthefines.com and all donations there now qualify for a charitable tax receipt through the registered Canadian charity, The Democracy Fund. Again, that special website is fightthefines.com.